And the most experienced quarterback in college football is Bo Nix. He started 34 games at Auburn to begin his career. Then he transferred to Oregon. He set the school record for completion percentage a year ago, nearly 72%. And now everywhere you look, it's the strong Heisman promotional campaign. Bodacious Deion Sanders. From one of the greatest players of all time to the most wildly intriguing, irresistibly attention-getting head coach, leading out his 3-0 Colorado Buffaloes. As we welcome you to ABC College Football, presented by Capital One. And the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. From here at Austin Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, the very impressive 10th-ranked Ducks hosting the ultimate upstarts, number 19, Colorado. Yeah, just put on those sunglasses, those shades, and settle in. For There's been no shortage of drama either. Twice this year, this team has already come back late in games to win. But now they come into Autzen Stadium in a hostile environment, taking on a very good Oregon team. Jay Steely, Jay's son, will be kicking off for Colorado. Gary Bryant, a speedy receiver, back deep for the Ducks. And Bryant will get the opportunity to start this game, and he spins his way and somehow kept his balance as he gets out towards the 27-yard line. Sprint left for Knicks. And he was chased down and pursued by Sylvan Craig. Well, because of that experience, Joe, the game is just slowing down for Bonix. He plays so fast now. He gets dropped back quickly, reads coverage quickly, gets the ball out of his hands quickly. And this Colorado defense has not seen a quarterback like Bo Nix this year. And they certainly haven't seen a guy in total control of his offense the way Nix is. Second and 11. Lucky Irving's going to be able to get something big off the left side. And more breaking a tackle. This is something Oregon's going to try to do, get the ground game going. Colorado's defense has struggled against the run this year, giving up 195 rushing yards per game. 15 yards for Bucky Irving. Knicks able to go underneath. As getting it out past the 40-yard line is Troy Franklin. He's built a wonderful relationship with Bo Nix. And Franklin really is an alpha receiver in a size and speed matchup problem at six foot three. And remember, no Travis Hunter at cornerback in this game for Colorado. So if I'm Oregon, I'm trying to get my best receiver the ball early and see if there's anybody that can cover. Travis Hunter, the star lockdown cornerback for Colorado, injured last week on a hit that drew a penalty. Nix quickly to the outside and is back to Franklin. And this Ducks offense is in rhythm, Jesse. Well, Colorado's putting Amari and Cooper. He's their next best up at corner, trying to cover and trying to shadow Troy Franklin, one of the best receivers in the entire country. That's a matchup that Bo Nix is going to be looking for often in this game. Two quick receptions for Franklin. Nix gets it to his tight end. Ferguson, who goes down the sideline and muscles his way inside the 10-yard line. And don't blink. Just like that, first and goal, Ducks. A penalty is back at the 20-yard line. We'll see if they're going to walk it back. Holding. Off and number 11. 10-yard penalty. So the holding call will bring it back. For Dan Lanning's offense. Well, it's going to be Troy Franklin one on one out to the left side against Amari and Cooper. This is basically modern day triple option offense. Zone read with an attachment, get it to the tight end. There's the block right there, just a little bit of a jersey pull right in front of the referee. But Joe, this matchup between these two guys is critical to the success of each team in this game. Noah Whittington now, the running back, flanking Bo Nix. First and 14 after the penalty. 
Whittington trying to find a crease. Instead, he's pushed back with Trevor Woods. Trevor Woods, who had the interception in the end zone that ended last week's throw of the win against CSU. And it's going to be important that Colorado's defense can at least slow down this rushing attack a little bit, while at the same time being able to play some zone coverage on the back end to prevent Bo Nix from taking shots. Texas Tech did a really good job of it week two against Oregon. Easier said than done, though. Second and nine, pressure coming quickly, getting it to Johnson, and Johnson weaving his way for a first down. Ball comes out at the end. We will see if they mark him down. The on the field is the runner was down. So a little 160-pound Tez Johnson able to weave his way through that defense. And to spit that football out as quickly as Bo Nix did, it's kind of like a shortstop turning, too. You're just getting it out to your guy as fast as possible. You see the right elbow comes down far before the ball is dislodged. Good call there, no fumble. It's 14 yards for Johnson and a first down for Oregon. Goes back to Ferguson, who is upended. That was well defensed that time by Marion Cooper. In a couple of times now, Oregon has gone to these zone read with attachment plays, trying to get the ball out in the perimeter of the field. But we've seen the speed of Colorado's defense as well, going sideline to sideline a little bit. Second and ten. Nix with plenty of time, and he goes underneath again to Tez Johnson. Well, this is an area of the field, Joe. We haven't seen Bo Nix run the ball a lot this year, especially down by the goal line. You saw it a ton last season when he had 14 rushing touchdowns, which led all quarterbacks in the FBS. But after this nice completion here to Tez Johnson in the slot, you're in a position third and short. And I think Bo Nix's legs have to be a big factor and weapon for this offense. Third down and one at the Colorado three-yard line. Tenth play of this opening drive. Whittington into the end zone for a Ducks touchdown. job at tight end. Patrick Herbert right here getting a block on Jordan Dominic and allowing a cutback for Whittington. You've got to be able to set that edge outside. Great job using his hands and leverage. And that's a very impressive opening drive by the Ducks. A 10-play drive. Lewis caps it with the extra point. Bo Nix, a high offense, set to go. Tess, Jesse, Colorado's motivation this week isn't so much about Oregon as it is the doubters. Deion Sanders told me he cannot recall ever being a 21-point underdog in all his years as a player or as a coach until today. He actually loves the fact that the spread is 21, the same iconic number 21 he wore across his chest all those years, Tess. Yeah, Katie, I love the fact that he doesn't underplay the circumstances here either. He tells his players, look, you want to play in front of 10-plus million people? You want the spotlight? Let's see what you do with it. Here's a guy who loves the spotlight. His quarterback, his son, Shador. And he's going to complete his first pass of the game as he's able to get it to Xavier Weaver, his favorite target. And he's the real deal. He's completing 79% of his throws. His accuracy is uncanny. He does such a good job getting himself in good position to throw every ball. Second and seven. Pick up the pressure. Going to take a shot downfield, and that's beyond Weaver to the outside. And it's amazing that Shador Sanders has been putting up Heisman Trophy numbers behind an offensive line that has been very average. Shador Sanders has already been sacked 15 times this year. They've got to do a better job protecting him in this one. He leads the nation in third downs, but this third and seven is going to be well short as he was looking for Jimmy Horn there. Of course, Horn had the amazing 45-yard touchdown catch a week ago on the 98-yard drive. So a three and out for the Buffs. Mark 
gets it. Has four punts of over 50 yards this season. The dangerous Tez Johnson has his heels on the 30, looking to return for Oregon. They came after it. It was an awkward knuckler that just settles in past midfield. So the Ducks will have good field position to start their second drive of the afternoon, already up 7-0. Georgia Tech. When the Knicks went to the hospital the day Bo was born, Charles Kelly and his wife Christy babysat Bo's older sister Emma. That's how close the families were. Kelly still has, in a silver cup on his desk, a piece of chocolate the Knicks gave out to announce Bo's arrival. The chocolate reads, here he is, Bo Chapman Knicks. He still has Emma's piece of chocolate as well. That's a 23-year-old piece of chocolate, you guys. Isn't that something? Think about that. The closest of family friends on the day that Bo Nix was born. He was babysitting his older sister, and now he's putting 11 guys on the field to try to take him down. Whittington. Well blocked for Noah Whittington in another chunk play for Oregon. Shiloh Sanders. It's a great Coach Prime's other son with the tackle. Great play call by offensive coordinator Will Stein because Colorado was bringing the blitz from the left side of the formation, and they decided to go right where there was a lot of green grass. 15 yards for Whittington. He looked for Bo Nix as they go trips to the near side with Bucky Irving, who they set up the screen for, and Irving was met that time by Trevor Woods. Yeah, and one thing that Will Stein likes to do, too, is leave running backs on the field but go into empty sets. He's got running backs like Bucky Irving that can run routes, and they'll let them line up, spit them the football, and let them go be athletes in space. One of the things that's really hard about slowing this Ducks offense down. number 58 five-yard penalty second down matthew richards heads up this for oregon offense that's averaging 58 points a game they haven't played the 85 bears yet this year but they do have a lot of explosive playmakers on the field whether it's bucky irving noah whittington troy franklin tez johnson lots of guys in space if you don't make tackles they can take it the distance second and eight after the penalty Will Stein, fine, young offensive coordinator. Here's the swing pass to Bryant, and Bryant tackled in space that time by Cooper. Great job in the open field making a tackle. If he doesn't make that, then that's going to be a lot of extra yards, and who knows, maybe a touchdown for Oregon. Coach Prime's got to like that. We talked about Amari and Cooper having to step up into that alpha cornerback role that Travis Hunter normally occupies in games like this. It's not just covering guys downfield, Joe. It's also making tackles in the open field. And Amarion Cooper got an earful from Coach Prime. We were sitting there in practice on Thursday, and now he's responding. Third down and 10. Nix is going to keep it. And Nix trying to dive ahead. And he's going to be a couple yards short of that line of gain taken down on the 30. So that offense may stay on the field here on fourth and about two. They got a big size advantage up front with their offensive line, and they believe in their ability to get some push. Bringing on an extra tight end now, and Patrick Herbert. Fourth down and two. Quick pass to the outside. And weaving ahead is Gary Bryant. Gary Bryant patiently waited for that block for just a moment. A transfer from USC, and he's able to move the chains. Well, that's a great effort by Bryant, because it looked like Cameron Silman Craig from Colorado was going to be able to make a stop there right at the line of scrimmage. Just good hard running to move the sticks. Nix is 8 for 8. Irving. As he goes ahead for nine yards, Trevor Woods on the back end with a tackle. Well, Oregon's offensive line right now is doing a really nice job getting into the second level of Colorado's defense, getting hats on hats, and it's springing these Oregon running backs. Nick's quick game again to Bryant as Bryant will get another first down for Oregon. It's a lot of RPOs, right, from Bo Nix, and that's part of the experience is knowing when to hand it off and when to spit it out wide, and doing it quickly. We talk about how he's just executing right now and getting through and processing plays so fast. This is a far cry from the guy we saw start his first game back at Auburn against the Oregon Ducks. That's totally right. different player. 
Orbit motion from Franklin. Irving stacked up, trying to break free, kept his balance somehow, and fights his way to the five-yard line. It looked like Derek McClendon had him all wrapped up, and still, a 5'10", 195-pound running back is able to break this tackle. Look at this. Number nine's got him all wrapped up, and he's able to scoot out. I'll tell you, Bucky Irving is a guy that can fit between very small spaces and creases. You don't need to blow open big holes for him to hurt you. He's a guy that has great vision, and he runs very hard for a guy his size. Irving stacked up that time and brought down. When you're Colorado playing on the road in this kind of hostile environment, you got the feeling they had to start fast in this game and try and seize some of this momentum to build some confidence. This right here is a massive play. Third down and five. And get a first down at the two-yard line. Nix, sprint right, looking for an option, throwing back to Ferguson, and Ferguson is stacked up. Getting help from a friend to get some extra yardage as a flag comes down, but Trevor Woods was right on top of it with the throwback to the tight end, Terrence Ferguson. We will check on the late flag. After the play. play. Personal foul. foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. And that's a killer. And that's not starting fast, Joe. That time with Leonard Payne with the foul. After making a tremendous stop, it looks like you're going to set up the field goal opportunity. And just in late, just extracurricular and unnecessary. And have the self-inflicted wounds here. Coach Kron shaking his head. First and goal. Direct snap to Irving. Going off left tackle and the run fit works as they're able to stop him for just a game and another flag is down. Offside. Defense number nine. In the neutral zone of the pass. The penalty and fourth half to the of the goal. Still first down. Joe, it's the penalties that happen pre-snap and post-snap that drive coaches crazy because it has nothing to do with effort. It's all mental. That time, Derek McClendon lining up offside pre-snap. Between going three and out on offense, having a 29-yard punt in special teams, and now these penalties defensively, this is not the start the coach prime envisioned. So first and goal, loaded backfield with Bo Nix. Knicks, quarterback run, and then a throw, and then getting into the end zone is Casey Kelly. From the famed football family in western New York, the nephew of the Bills legend, Jim Kelly. Stephen Jones, the right guard, is trying to pull the block. Jordan Dominic out here. He's going to try to get here. He's a little bit slow getting there. And make a throw. Swinging gate formation for Oregon here on the PAT. That's Patrick Herbert lined up, and he's going to take it. That was actually not Herbert who ended up with a direct snap as he typically does. Instead, that was wrong. But this is what happened moments ago. Yeah, great job and individual effort by Bo Nix. Fighting off the tackle, finding Casey Kelly for the score, and it's all Ducks early. 14-0. 13-0. Get to see action, and they just keep doing their thing. Remember, it was a three and out on the first series for Shador Sanders and the Bucks. As met right away was Tavares Dawson. Seeing a lot of very quick throws. I think the one place Colorado has an advantage in this game is their receivers versus the Ducks secondary. They've got a lot of game breakers in Jimmy Horn Jr., Xavier Weaver. This Oregon defense has not been a great tackling unit so far this year. Shador checking at the line. Has a high football IQ. Everybody raves about it. Second and six. He checks to a run to Edwards. Edwards can't find much against the middle of that Oregon defense. Now it sets up third down here. And one thing Oregon does extremely well is Dan Lenny mixes up his third down packages. They have so much variety in looks they can give you here. We've already told you about the struggles that the offensive line of Colorado has had. 
Third down and five. Pressure on Shador. Able to get it on a shallow cross. He finds Antonio. And it's good to have the big-bodied receiver back for Colorado. He's 6'4", 225 pounds. They just don't have a guy like him, Joe. And that's a nice job giving protection to Shador Sanders to find someone. Of course, we'll have to wait on the play. First goal foul. Walking the passer. Defense number 34. High contact. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. To EOT with the penalty. You see the protection up front doing a nice job, and it's Tuioti right here late getting that right hand in the face of Shador Sanders. So that's going to tack on some extra yardage after a huge completion on third down. Their first time in Oregon territory today. Going to take a shot downfield. And nearly intercepted as he was looking for Weaver. But Kyrie Jackson had excellent coverage. Phenomenal job from the back end. Xavier Weaver is the deep threat for Colorado. He takes the, take the, the top off of defenses. But look at the six foot three Alabama transfer. Kyrie Jackson, turn around, locate the football. Shador Sanders, lucky that one wasn't picked off. secure him after just a gain of three and a half yards. There's an example of what Oregon does on third down. It looks like they've got six guys up on the line of scrimmage and they're going to be blitzing everybody at the very last second. They drop a guy out and that's the guy who ends up making the tackle on the receiver tunnel screen. it on to punt. As Johnson is going to put his heels on the 10-yard line as Colorado's looking to pin and he calls for the fair catch. Tess Jesse, coaches hate nothing more than unnecessary penalties. A close second, missed tackle. Deion Sanders went over to the defensive bench reminding guys about the little details, wrapping up, getting guys to the ground. Not the defensive start he would have liked to see from his team so far. Especially these defensive backs. Can you imagine having Deion Sanders coaching you? Greatest of all time. <laughs> the greatest of all time as your coach. The standard that he sets here on this team is so high. For you, somewhat relatable because Steve Spurrier was a, has been trouble when quarterback was your head coach. I, I would throw an incompletion and Coach Spurrier would look at me and say, well, you can't complete that? I'm like, you could complete that. You won the Heisman Trophy. You played the NFL for 10-something years. Bo Nix from inside his own five. And that is incomplete as he was looking for the six foot three Trayshawn Holden. And that's the first incompletion of the afternoon for Bo Nix. He's been dialed in. We've seen a lot of short throws so far in this game. He continues to go after Amari and Cooper. You cannot overstate the impact of not having Travis Hunter on the field in the secondary for Colorado. Bo Nix trying to take advantage of these throws into the boundary against Cooper. Whittington, excellent pursuit down the line by the Colorado defense as the final seconds of the first quarter will tick down. Ducks had a very strong start, long drives, a 10-play drive with Whittington capping it, then Nix made that excellent play to Kelly. 13-zip, top 10 Oregon. ESPN College Football, D.C. State. The strong start that they produce. Yeah, Joe, I agree. I think normally when a team comes to play Oregon in Oxen Stadium, all eyes are on the Ducks. But you and I know that's not oh. the case today. And I think the Ducks took that personal. Sam Lanning in his second year here, just 37 years old, of course, won the national titles as the D.C. at Georgia. Now, a third down and 12. Oh, Nick's. 11th, 12th passing to start the game as Whittington comes into the backfield. Chance for the Colorado defense. Nix with time. Underneath as he goes to Franklin. A flag is down as Franklin is going to be tackled four yards short of the landing. They line the gain as Cooper and Woods converge on the tackle. I think they're going to get a hold on an Oregon receiver. I think it was Treshawn Holden out on the outside. Of course, Coach Prime says, hey, we're going to decline that. We want that ball. 
They only had nine plays of offense to Colorado in that first quarter. Oregon had 136 total yards to Colorado's 19. Pass interference. Offense. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a fourth down. So here's an opportunity for the Buffs. That was big, Joe. Right before that snap in the break, Coach Prime was out on the field trying to motivate and hype his defense up to come up with a play. That is a huge stop right now, getting an opportunity to give the football back to Shador Sanders here somewhere around midfield to create some momentum. Jimmy Horn's the return man, and he's at the other 40. It's the first punt for Ross James. And they are going to fake it. And it is going to work out. Would you look at this? That was from their own 17-yard line as they fake it with Casey Rogers, the big 300-pound defensive tackle. Dan Lanning pulls that out. Now, Casey Rogers was an excellent lacrosse player. He had a scholarship offer to play lax at Syracuse, so the big man can run. Look at this. Everybody from Colorado is looking at the punter who's rolling out to the right. Not just eye candy on offense, eye candy on special teams. Great selling job by the punter like it went over his head. And how about the big fella rumbling? He goes 18 yards to 300 pounder. And right now they are dominating in all three phases. Look at Casey Rogers over on the sideline. All the hair flowing, everybody slapping him on the back as Bucky Irving takes it past midfield. Shiloh Sanders with the tackle. You're going to get big right tackle, and Johnny Cornelius pulling around the outside. There's another flag down here, but we see him right here, 65, roll out, gets a block on a DB. That's not a lot of fun. Holding. Offense, number three. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. That's the tight end, Ferguson, who was blacked. Joe, penalties have been a massive problem for Oregon early this year. 25 in the first three games. That ranks 118th in the nation. That's something that Dan Lanning and his coaching staff have got to get worked out. Four penalties for 40 yards today. Second and 13 after the penalty. Nick's going to swing it to Irving. And Bucky is met and breaks the tackle. He went right through Travis Jay, the transfer from Florida State. Jay didn't wrap him, and Bucky said, I got more in me. Well, it's Demoy Kennedy, too, at linebacker. You just got to get hats to the football. Look at 22. It's just not a good enough effort. And Katie was telling us earlier, that's what Coach Prime was telling his guys on the sidelines. You've got to just do the fundamental things better to have a shot. So he gets nine yards back, and it makes a third and four. And our pre-snap penalty. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Connerly, the left tackle, Jeff. Here for Colorado defensively. On a third down situation, obvious passing situation, you got to try to build a fence around Bo Nix and contain him. We talk about him being one of the best dual-threat quarterbacks in the country. You can't give him any lanes to run through or give him an opportunity to extend the play. Pass rush here is huge. Third down and nine. Nix with time, shallow cross goes underneath, and Franklin, another flag at the end of that play as Franklin gets enough for the first down. Probably a face mask at the end of this play to Troy Franklin. Personal foul, foul, face mask. Defense number four. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. On third down, you're going to have Franklin coming from this side, and Travis J is going to converge. He's over here to make a tackle and just got the hand up in the face that extra yards and that insult to injury converting that first down a punt a couple completions a penalty and all of a sudden they're at the colorado 38 nicks play action being chased down and brought down that was jordan dominic with the big much needed sack of bo nicks jordan dominic is their most dynamic pass rusher and this time he doesn't just beat a, a, a tackle over here he's going to try to get him the running back's going to try to get him but dominic has tremendous get off does a great job using the hands to slap down the arms of the tackle and there's the closing speed that is huge for this colorado defense they haven't been great rushing the passer this year but playing on the road against the quarterback that dangerous like bo nix it's a big time play and it makes for a second and 21 
Irving splitting defenders and getting it all back and more. First down, Ducks. You know, after getting a sack and creating a negative play right around you, you, you just the very next snap, you get one go right up the gut. And again, guys missing tackles. Quickly getting it to Holden. 21 yard line. That was a big time hit by Shiloh Sanders. He's been a star on this Colorado defense last week against Colorado State. Huge pick six. Also created a forced fumble. Great job there coming downhill with bad intentions. Second and seven. Whittington. Taken down from behind. It was well blocked, but then Amari McNeil was able to drag him down. Right now, lined up against Travis J. The Florida State transfers missed time with a knee injury out to his left down here one-on-one. -on -one. 32, Nick to the end zone. And it's into the arms of Troy Franklin. Touchdown, Oregon. The big man. Started it all. Casey Rogers with a fake punt, and then Bo Nix, who has been red hot, caps that drive. He's a six foot three receiver running a fade route. Look at the speed off of the ball. And Travis J is six foot two himself. He has good size. He hasn't had a lot of reps early this year. And on an island one on one, he's no match for Franklin. That is one of the best receivers in the entire country. A guy that everybody's expecting to have a big season after leading the conference last year with nine receiving touchdowns. You see that diamond formation here on the two-point conversion. Nix goes to the other side and gets it to Franklin. This offense, when it's in rhythm, with a Heisman contending quarterback in Bo Nix, is dangerous. It all started with the big punt. Remember, it was fourth down on their own 17. That big guy has been well-traveled. Went to boarding school at Avon Old Farms in Connecticut. Went to Nebraska. Now he's at Oregon, and he set up this. Taken down by Bryce Betcher. They've got to be able to just run the ball a little bit. You see Dan Lanning there. I'd say uh, that got his players' attention, oh, and they responded in all three phases of the game. They're trying to make a point to the country right now. Empty set for Shador. Has time before that happens. Eventually it closed down and it was the transfer from the SEC doing damage out west. Jordan Birch. He's up against Jared Christian Lichtenhan who's a six foot ten left tackle over here and it's hard for him to bend. You see that there's DNs and more athletic guys that sometimes duck under him. That time he just went speed to power and just bull rushed the left tackle right into the lap of Shador Sanders. And that leaves him with a third and 18. And a crowd cascading with a roar in his face. Back up again. This offensive line is such a struggle and diving for the attempt at an interception on the sideline. So it was tremendous pursuit that time by the true freshman Blake Purchase, forcing Shador Sanders out to his right. It's an incomplete pass with Jamal Hill, who was trying to see if he could get to that ball. So it's the second three and out. Look at the effort here on the end. Stretching out Hill. Just going down, not able to come away with the interception. But what a start by the Oregon Ducks. Already the third punt for Mark Bassett. Tez Johnson, the return man, is back at the other 40. So that play clock coming down. And again, the kind of penalties that'll drive a coaching staff crazy. You have to execute. And now you're asking a lot of your big punter to turn this ball, drive it downfield against the speedy Tez Johnson, who's just beyond midfield. And over in, fielded at the 45. 
down right away. Time equipment manager Kenny Farr came up with the idea. Dan Lanning says he loves the concept because he can tell who's working hard based on the colors changing on the field. Exactly. Can't get away with it. Oh, there's an interception as Colorado's Jaquez Robinson gets the much-needed turnover. And that is the first Oregon turnover of the season. And a transfer Robinson coming off of a hamstring injury, doing a great job locating the ball. We talked about Bo Nix making good decisions. I like the matchup he had outside one-on-one. -on -one. He needed to put this way down the field and give his receiver to run under it instead. It's the Alabama transfer Robinson coming off of a hamstring injury, doing a great job locating the ball. And there is a massive takeaway, something Colorado has been so good at all year, leading the nation with 10 coming into the season. The defensive coordinator, Kelly, he's loving that. Of course, he was at Alabama as well. Robinson came over. Shador trying to quickly get it to the outside to Weaver, and he does successfully on first down. First interception thrown by Bo Nix this year. Yeah, that was a small window to throw that one into there for Shador Sanders. Doing a nice job, though, with the location of the throw, keeping it away from Nico Reed. Second and four. Shador to the other side. Back shoulder that is incomplete. It was denied by Kyrie Jackson. Tell you, Kyrie Jackson came to play today. We saw him with a big, big play earlier in this game on a go route. This time, doing a nice job just turning his head. So many times you see cornerbacks, they have no idea where the ball is. They're sort of flailing. Creates pass interference. He's been playing clean. And on an island, he's been winning all game long. Third down and four. Pick up the A-gap pressure. That ball is intended for Harrison, who hauls it in, went down to get it at midfield. Remember, he was the star at the end of regulation last week, had the game-time two-point conversion, and in overtime, both of their touchdowns. Yeah, he's a guy that has to step up for this offense with no Travis Hunter out there. Here's Tempo. Sanders, tackle, set. As they came in hard on him. Well, that's a coverage sack on the back end. Nowhere for Sanders to go with the football. It's Brandon Dorless, big number three, at 290 pounds. Man, he's athletic. He can play defensive end or play defensive tackle, and the coverage is what allowed Oregon to get home to Colorado's quarterback. He's the alpha defensive lineman. He's their guy up front. He's come up with huge plays already this year, especially against Texas Tech and that thriller. Second and 17. Shador backing up again, taken down again, and this offensive line gives way. Well, it's going to be Evan Williams at safety coming in on a blitz, and running back Anthony Hankerson just can't handle him. It's a great dial-up by Tosh LePoy, the defensive coordinator coming from the left side. That's not an easy block when a safety's got a 15-yard head start at you, and another sack for this Oregon defense. Evan Williams charging in, running back couldn't pick him up. So it's the third sack for Oregon, the second of this drive alone. And on third and 33, they'll just give it to Hankerson. The running back should get all the exotic looks from Tosh Lapoy and Dan Lanning. It's an uphill battle in this one because Colorado's small on the inside of that offensive line, so you don't feel great running it against a more physical front like Oregon, and then Pass pro has been an issue that Colorado has had all season long, really regardless of who they've been playing. Look forward to hearing all the reaction on Florida State Clemson as well. Jordan James breaking tackles and going ahead for yet another first down for Oregon. He's their most physical runner, and I think you could easily argue that the running back group is the deepest position on Oregon's offense. Irving, Whittington, and James can all do a lot of the same things, and to have fresh legs wearing a defense down, especially one like Colorado that hasn't been great stopping the run, that's a tall, tall ask. To slow these guys down. Knicks gets it to him now on the outside. And Jordan James again, this time, was dragged out of bounds by Trevor Woods. James hitting the hole. And then trying to lunge ahead for the sticks. Maybe just about a football length short as Jawan Mitchell, who's been well-traveled, was able to make the tackle. Well, you see that tough running by James there. He's 205 pounds and a guy that can kind of break through arm tackles, push the pile, and always fall forward. James was a, a Georgia commit and then flipped when Dan Lanning came here to Oregon, and he's found a, a nice home for himself here. You know, he leads the conference 
and rushing touchdowns with five heading into this game. Yeah, he was the only Georgia commit who flipped when Lanning came over, and he's having success with the Ducks. Was a first down. James stays in as the back. And they will feed him, and here he goes. Jordan James able to cut and spin, and another chunk play in the run game for the Ducks as he makes it to the 36. Thank you, Kevin. Look forward to hearing what Kevin and Boog have to say at halftime on this big day of college football. Knicks strong arms it, and with these, Troy Franklin into the end zone. A 36-yard touchdown strike. Bo Nix to Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin, who was such a huge recruit in 21. Everybody thought he was going to be a breakout star as a freshman. And then the very last practice before the season opener, he was injured, took him a while to get going. Now you can't stop him. Well, that was a coverage bust on the back end by Colorado. Oregon's going to run their slot receiver on a corner route here. You're going to see one defender go with it. Trevor Woods is the safety, and there's no one in the middle of the field to cover Troy Franklin. It's a coverage bust on the back end at the safety position, and that is just way too easy pitch and catch for Bo Nix at his favorite target. It's Franklin's releases and his routes that are probably the best thing that he does. And then when you add that with his mind and his cre creativity, he's really unstoppable. And both says they have deep intellectual conversations about looks and what they want to do to carve up defenses. It's just such a really strong partnership, and it shows up every single Saturday. Yeah, that's a great point, Katie. You don't see a lot of really tall receivers as sudden as Troy Franklin is. And those releases you're talking about, that helps him create separation and using his top end speed. And you can tell, Bo Nix and Troy Franklin have spent a lot of time in the off season and throughout the week in practice getting on the same page because their chemistry right now looks unstoppable. Well, he's targeted him seven times. Next closest guy is three. And by the way, he's produced 101 yards and two touchdowns. There's Jordan Birch and there's his target, Shador Sanders. Was only 7 of 12 for 37 yards, been sacked three times. Edwards out of the backfield. Edwards, the star freshman who was committed to Notre Dame and then flipped and said, I got to play for Coach Prime. Well, here's the problem if you're Colorado right now. You know you need to take shots downfield, but how are you going to get that protected? How are you going to give Shador Sanders time when the offensive line has been struggling as much as they've had? That is a big question for offensive coordinator Sean Lewis to try to figure out here because that has to be the biggest adjustment they make in the second half. And he look, quickly getting it to Weaver, who turns the corner, couldn't keep his balance as he was taken down that time by Dante Manning. But for a lot of this season, the offensive line has really been neutralizing some of the talent they have at wide receiver. Sean Lewis trying to find ways to get his best players, Weaver and Horn and Edwards, involved in the passing game, but it's hard when you can't block for your quarterback. Empty look. Shador, shallow cross. He goes back to Weaver, and Weaver is tracked down. i got to say one thing I've been impressed with Oregon defensively. They are tackling the catch. These are dangerous dudes once they have the ball in their hands. But Oregon's defense on the back end has done a really good job of limiting the damage. Second and six again. Just going to the quick game. That is off the hands of Jimmy Horn. Now it sets up another big third down. There's a big substitution for Oregon coming on the field. Pass rush specialist Blake Purchase, the true, the true freshman, takes it. And here we go, Austin Stadium, one of the loudest environments in college football. Third and six, four-man rush. Shador spins out of it. Another man in his face and sacked again. That's the fourth time. And Tatum Tuioti with the sack. The true freshman takes down Shador Sanders. I mean... Jared Christian Lichtenhan just has to do a better job at the left tackle position. He's just giving up way too much ground to Blake Purchase coming off the edge. We just talked about him as a true freshman coming on the field. But out here... You've got to kick out. I mean, you just can't let 
him take a straight beeline down the median and get to the quarterback. You've got to create separation between him and the QB. And you see Oregon's defense. It's really not just that one play, but the left tackle spot that time is George Birch getting the sack. When they try to go to the RPO game, they're not able to hold up in the middle of Brandon Dorless. You've seen the safety blitz be able to get home all in all. Four sacks on the day given up by Colorado. And Des, it, it doesn't matter how good your quarterback is. It doesn't matter how dynamic your wide receivers or running backs are. If you can't get guys blocked, all of that is neutral. Pass it on for the fifth time to punt for the Bucks. Coach Brime has said it time and again. Do you believe? Do you believe? Just listen. I believe in the man. I believe in where this program's going. His ability to be a motivator, to be a mastermind football coach. But I don't think anybody's believing in that offensive line right now. Not right now. Also, I think you just have to question just how much emotionally did Colorado have left in the tank coming into this game? Bo Nix, after a timeout, was used as he goes right back to Troy Franklin. I mean, think about it, Joe. They've been in the spotlight Colorado has for the first three weeks, and that game and win against Colorado State was physically draining. It was emotionally draining. Coming in here without your best player, Travis Hunter. Nix is on fire. He can't miss. Tess Johnson, and coverage is soft. Pockets are open, and Nix is carving them up. He's just wide open. There's nobody lining up against Johnson in the slot. I mean, we saw the touchdown pass to Franklin on the last drive on the coverage bus, and there's another one by the Buffaloes. And it's a play in this first half. Nix goes underneath as he's right back to Tess Johnson. I mean, Joe, this looks like a really good offense practicing two-minute against the yes, scout team. Yes. I mean, that's just really, to me, just calling it like I see it. That's what this looks like right now. One of the best offenses in the country with a Heisman contending quarterback and with running backs who can do this, whether it's Irving, who you see there, Whittington, or James. This is an offense that is going to give a lot of defenses major headaches in the Pac-12. And Charles Gallier right now, he's got his hands full. Quick to the outside, and again it's Franklin. Franklin makes a move as he works his way to the 10 yard line. Gotta be Troy smart. Franklin, that's eight catches now. Yeah, you gotta be smart. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Uh, uh, knowing the clock and the situation in two minutes, getting out of bounds on the boundary there. Got timeouts in your back pocket. Dan Lang is gonna use one here, but it's a situation they practice often, trying to preserve as much time as you can to see if you can steal another touchdown. I take this thing 35 nothing into half. I think there are going to be people that look at this stat line and say, oh, the magic ran out and question some of the things you saw the last three weeks. Folks, just point to that offensive line. Shador Sanders, who has been masterful in spite of the offensive line struggles. He came in number two in the country in passing yards, in touchdown passes, and completion percentage. But there are legit edge rushers on Oregon, and not just that, but you brought up how much comes at it. It has been a struggle. Then on the other side of Shador, you have have Bo Nix, who, as we said, like having a coach on the field, distributing the ball, sharp as could be. He's 22 of 24 and could add to it right here. He's got another one-on-one -on -one up here with Amarian Cooper, his best receiver. He's going to run it. Nix inside the five and inside the end zone. He can do it with the arm and then showcase the smarts with the legs. As his mom and dad Krista and Patrick look on. It's been a near flawless first half for Oregon. We talked about this earlier. Would Will Stein start letting number 10 run a little bit more in the red zone like we saw last year under then offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham and dialed up a beautiful play at a critical juncture. This offensive line's been impressive for Oregon. And they're doing a nice job getting into the second level. Dave Iuli, the left guard, is able to work his way up and get a hat on a linebacker. And that kind of created the crease right there for Bo Nix to use his speed. And it's all about the team. They're fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Dan, that's Saying we're not done. We're not satisfied. It felt like Colorado was getting all the shine. That's Jesse 
and coming out of the locker room, Deion Sanders said, look, we're going to see what we're made of. Situations like this make you hold one another accountable. That's players and coaches. He said one play is not going to put 35 points up on, on the board. But he said, yeah, I want to see the possession, time of possession improve. Colorado's had the ball nine minutes to Oregon's 20. He also said Shador has to take what the defense gives him and be quicker with decisions. And I don't know what sense you guys got, but standing next to Dan Lanning going into half, this man has taken this personal. Absolutely, Katie. There's there's no doubt about it. He didn't offer it up during the week the way other head coaches opposite Coach Prime have. But just before kickoff, he definitely let his team know. Flag is down. False start. Offense to Brady seven. Five yard penalty. First down. I think if you're if you're Coach Prime right now, you're just looking for positives to build off of offensively. At this point, you're right. What Katie just said, no touchdowns worth 35 points. You just got to get a completion. You just need to get a first down and start to work your way back in and try to build some momentum. Shador against a four-man rush, and he does get it quickly out to Weaver, who cuts back against the grain and does a nice job of making the most of that. And I think that's what they're going to have to do. I don't think Shador Sanders can hold the football. I don't think this offensive line can protect for him. So it's going to come down to guys like Weaver and Jimmy Horn Jr. to just make something happen after they have the ball and after the catch. Play action on second and four, and a man right in his face again. There's Jamal Hill, and a flag comes in late as the linebacker Hill was tearing down Sanders. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 18, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's May Spuna. The other edge linebacker. Well, they're bringing a linebacker right up the middle, and they're asking their tight end, Michael Harrison, to pull and get him. He's just too slow, and at this point here, Oregon's just got to let up. Kind of letting Colorado off the hook early, and maybe that's something, a little thing like that that kind of sparks a little bit of life into Colorado to keep this drive going. Gives him a first down. Sanders. Still trying to survive, even sprinting right. He's looking to turn the corner and then just run out of bounds. Well, Joe, I just think offensive coordinator Sean Lewis is digging deep into his playbook now, just trying to find ways to create opportunities for Shadur Sanders to throw downfield. That time, moving the launch point and getting him away from back under center. But you're seeing the athleticism and the speed of this Oregon front seven. They're very deep. They can roll in fresh legs. They have done an outstanding job recruiting in that department. It's giving Colorado fits. Here they come off the top against the left tackle and getting it quickly out into Antonio is Shador Sanders. But that's big. Again, just a little slant throw, right? You get seven, eight yards. Now third down is manageable. And I got to imagine for Coach Prime, you're going for it on every fourth down at this point, especially near midfield. But quick throws and with these targets they have outside, they can make good things happen. Third down and three. Wilkerson out of the backfield. That'll give the Buffs a first down, depending on the flag that is all the way back at the 40-yard line. Personal foul. Hands in the face. Offense number 55. 15-yard penalty. Third down. They had to play a true freshman at center last year. Yeah, it was right in the middle of the field. They called it on Wells at the, the, the center, and there's going to be kind of a stunt coming from his left-hand side. You'll see him work the D-tackle, then come back over. They called that on the center, Van Wells. I think they meant to call that on Jack Bailey, That's right. the left guard. Sean Lewis, play caller. He's got to figure something out with this offensive line situation as Wilkerson takes it straight ahead on what was third and 18. There's just not a lot of play calls for third in California. That's what my old offensive coordinator, Sean Payton, used to call that. And They've been living dangerously through the first three games of the year. They've had a lot of third and long situations. And somehow, Shador Sanders has been able to pull the rabbit out of the hat more often than not. But in a game like this against this kind of talent, easily the best defense they've seen all year. Playing on the road with the crowd noise, just not easy to do. You gotta wonder what is the answer? How do you deal with it as the season continues when you've got 
such a weakness with this offensive line. Johnson backed up inside the 10 and he chooses to return it and makes a good decision doing so out to the 23 yard line. Well, Dan Lanning said, We're not done yet. Well, we almost had a threat to a national championship. We did have a threat. We almost had one take a big stumble today with that Florida State Clemson game, one of the contenders, as Noah Whittington takes it ahead for the Ducks. Big hit by Juwan Mitchell, who's really had an impact on this Colorado defense. He missed their first game against TCU and. Ever since he's been back in the lineup, they've had a, a more aggressive, more physical approach, harder to run up the middle up until today. But he's a guy, he's one of the few players on this defense, Joe, that look like they could play for Oregon's defense, honestly. Second and seven, Whittington. He catches the seam, and it'll be another first down for Oregon, eventually taken down by Trevor Woods. You've seen this over and over again. Oregon pulling offensive linemen. This time it's the right guard and the right tackle, and they just split Colorado right up the middle. That time it was Jordan Dominic who wasn't able to make the tackle, and it's another explosive play on the ground. Cornelius with a great block, and there is the slant on the in cut by Holden, the transfer from Alabama. And Bo Nix continues his hot hand. In fact, now, today, he makes history as he is the first player in college football history with over 55 touchdowns at multiple schools. Had the great career at Auburn and now this sensational, all the statistical superlatives at Oregon. They played three years at Auburn. He's only played basically a season in, in three and a half games at Oregon. It just shows you just how good he's been these last two seasons. Knicks, plenty of time to do that. Trey Sean Holden wide open. It's a nice design by Will Stein, the offensive coordinator. He's got his outside two receivers running clear out routes, and that allows the Alabama transfer Holden to work the boundary on the corner. And just another clean pocket, lots of time, and a too easy of a throw. Knicks going to loft it downfield to the end zone. Nearly a tremendous effort by Troy Franklin. He was matched up with Cooper. I think they're going to get Cooper here for pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number three. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. I can't tell you, Joe. I just just wonder how much different this game would look if Travis Hunter were on the field for Colorado. Not saying they'd be winning at all, but Troy Franklin has been eating these Colorado corners alive on the outside. Right there, Amari and Cooper, just no shot against the six foot three Frank. Of course, Travis Hunter, who's the ultimate Ironman, the two way superstar defensive back and wide receiver, he suffered injury, took a brutal late hit last week against Colorado State. Whittington can't find much. Down the line was Jawan Mitchell, the linebacker with the tackle. He's had a roller coaster college football career as Mitchell. This is now his fourth stop. And you see limping off is Whittington. and pain getting down to the ground on the Oregon sideline. That is a long day for Shador. How do you process this as a quarterback when you just have one of these days that feels completely hopeless, Jesse? Well, these are going to happen throughout your career. There's no question about that. And you just take it one play at a time. And at this point, his leadership will be big here in the second half. Keep these guys going. James comes in at running back as they shift the big heavy group of tight ends over to the left side. 13 personnel in for the Ducks. 35 zip. James probing the middle and trying to take Juwan Mitchell with him, but coming up just short of that goal line. Man, that was a big time collision right at the line of scrimmage. Juwan Mitchell, who we were talking about on the last drive, and that physicality that he brings to this defense that was a big time hit on Jordan James easily the most physical runner for the Oregon Ducks that's an example for your coach prime seeing your guys compete too that's down that, 35, at a certain point that is the scoreboard I mean the fact that right. Juwan Mitchell is, is is playing that hard at this point with his back against the wall so my coach prime is going to take uh, Knicks quick strike almost had it to Franklin again Forget the scoreboard. Competition, effort, and staying focused is what the score becomes for Colorado. Dan Lanning told Katie, heading into halftime, we're not done yet. And up 35-0, fourth and goal. Wow. I don't see the kicker coming on nope. the field. That was only the third incompletion for Bo Nix today. 
Jordan James is in there. That big, heavy group of tight ends in there. It is fourth and goal, and Dan Landing is saying, no, we want more. James, and they get more. Remember what he said to Katie George. We are not satisfied. We are not done. Katie turned to us. She said, is he taking this personal, all the hype around Colorado? All the spotlight on Colorado? When Oregon is the team with that 10 next to their name and with college football playoff hopes, they're three for three on fourth down today. Jordan James with the one-yard touchdown run. He gave us unprecedented access pregame. He said, yeah, you can listen to what I'm going to say to the Ducks. Here's more. Rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance. Today, we talk with our pads. You talk with your helmet, right? Every moment. The Cinderella story is over, man. Right? They're fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. There's a difference. Right? There's a difference. Right? This game ain't going to be played in Hollywood. It's going to be played on the grass. Right? It's going to be played on the grass. Right? And we got the strength in this room. Right? It's not about what we're walking into. It's about what we're walking in with. Connection in this room. Connection. 60 minutes or as long as it takes. Does that all mean something to you? Does that all mean something to you? Let's go. Huh? I think the best thing Dan Lanning did all week was he never said that in front of a microphone. Mm -hmm. Colorado's been so good this year at taking what other coaches say and using it as fuel for their fire. You saw that against Nebraska, Colorado State. Dan Lanning kept all of that internal, and, man, he lit a fire under his team today. He said the Cinderella story is over. That was one of the questions that so many of the – National sports pundits were asking this week, would there be more to this magical ride with Colorado? And Landing just declared it to his team before they came out. And went for it on fourth down to add more to it. 42 to nothing. And total domination, Jeff. See, but look at the total yards here. And then, and 439 to 30. In any metric, they're running the ball better, they're stopping the run better. They're protecting their quarterback better, they're getting after the opposing quarterback better. They're better on third down, they're better on fourth down. They faked a punt and came up with it. I mean, any metric you want, this is just, it's two different teams. You just referenced the fake punt. That may have been the thing that was the statement of the day. They were at their own 17. A fake punt giving the ball to his 305-pound defensive lineman who is playing shield. Shador able to get it to Edwards, and Edwards is wrapped up again and taken out of bounds. Another example of Oregon tackling the catch. And Dylan Edwards is hard to tackle in a phone book. Yep. I mean, he's 5'9", 170. Ask TCU about him. That's Colorado State about him. Not easy, but... This Oregon secondary, Kyrie Jackson, all these guys out in space in the open grass. They have been phenomenal in coverage, but even better, tackle. Edwards gets the call here. Makes it up to the 30-yard line. But to your point, this guy's a game-breaker, Dylan Edwards, a true freshman. Had the 75-yard screen pass touchdown against TCU. Had a 46-yard touchdown catch and sideline run with just about four minutes to play. He's a dynamic player. He's been bottled up today. Yeah. He's not great in pass protection. And here he is on third down. They don't release him on a route. Shador doesn't get him to him quickly. Watch out. Third and six. He got run over. From the outside, from the inside, Evan Williams again. Little D Dylan Edwards couldn't hold up. It didn't matter. It was coming for Shador Sanders. He's got a 170-pound running back taking on a 290-pound defensive end. It's just not good game planning on that third down. You've got to have another running back that can give you a shot. Dylan Edwards is great with the football in his hand, but he doesn't have a chance against the guy... That was just playing at South Carolina in the SEC at D-line. How is this going to change, Jesse? I mean, that's the question I have. you got to go max protect constantly now? I mean, this is a substantial weakness on this roster, this offensive line. And now you're in the midst of Pac-12 play? There's a muff as Johnson then picks it up and is taken down. We'll see if Dan Lanning keeps his word that they want more. It's 42 to zip. 
What can you tell us about Noah Whittington? Well, Tess, he suffered a left leg injury during Oregon's last series. He spent some time in the tent on the sidelines, but ultimately he was carted off to the locker room to take some x-rays. And I got to tell you, he looked extremely dejected on the back of that cart. Hoping the best for Noah Whittington. That's a big loss for Dan Lanning because he's probably their fastest running back. He is a huge weapon in the Ducks offense. Bucky Irving is in the backfield with Bo Nix. And he is taken down hard after just a gain of two yards. As with Levante Bentley, the second man to get in there after Cooper. And again, just going back now, if, if you're Coach Prime and Charles Kelly down this much, you want to see who loves football and who loves to compete. Who's not taking their foot off of the gas? And, and you find out a lot about who you've got in that locker room in moments like this. There's Kelly, worked under Nick Saban, now working under Coach Prime. How about that for a duo? Oh, look at that face mask. You kidding me? That was Jordan Dominic who just ripped Bo Nix down by the face mask. And you can hear the cascade of boos from Austin Stadium. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 44. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He intended to do this by any stretch. You, know, you do have to keep your composure now, obviously, down this much as the game gets on. That's just a very easy call there for the center judge. You know, and it kind of makes you wonder, too, if you're Dan Lanning at this point up 42-0, how much longer do you want Bo Nix in the game? Because you cannot afford to have him get injured. After the penalty, he's going to quickly get it to Ferguson, his big tight end. Ferguson nicknamed Kiefer. is good size, good speed. Trevor Woods with the tackle. She has so many dudes on this offense, don't they, Tom? They really do, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're, deep, they're deep at tight end. They got speedsters at running back and wide receiver. It, it, you know, we talk about how much Colorado is struggling on offense. It kind of makes you wonder the pressure on Oregon's offensive line, right? To have to play well because when you have all these tools and all these weapons, when the O-line plays well, these guys get the ball in their hands. They go out and get yards. Bucky Irving. Oh, he goes right underneath Jawan Mitchell before it's cleaned up by Shiloh Sanders. Fantastic job again by Oregon. They've been using this counter play where they pull the front side guard and, and tackle. They get a kick out block. One climbs into the second level, and there goes Bucky Irving in the open field taking a massive shot. I guess Dan Lanning was serious when he said, we're not satisfied, we want more. You know, as a defensive guy, too, he wants that zero to stay on the board. Nix, quick pass, gets it to Holden. Holden with a good block out in front and then puts a shoulder on Shiloh. And it's going to be first and goal, Ducks. Yeah, they've just been the more physical football team in this one. Really, in all facets on both sides of the ball. But Trayshawn Holt, that's a man. 6'3", 215 pounds. And we know that Shiloh Sanders is a guy that loves to come downhill with bad intentions. But, man, some big receivers lining up outside for the Ducks. And Colorado has eight guys in the box right now. Every DB is out on an island. And Oregon may still try to just run this in. First and goal. Irving tackled just beyond the line of scrimmage by Juwan Mitchell. A year ago, we saw him at Tennessee. Started his career at Texas. Had a cup of coffee at Arizona State before being dismissed from the team and now playing for Coach Prime. This is something, you know, that's demoralizing for a defense. But you, you load the box knowing the opposition is going to run the football and you still can't stop them. Trevor Woods, Jawan Mitchell looking over at Charles Kelly. Been a long afternoon for that defensive unit. Second and goal for Oregon. To the end zone and could have been another one. He was looking for Kyle Casper. Kyler Casper is a redshirt freshman who's six foot six. Yeah. 
their first game of the year. They throw throwing him a couple of fade routes down by the goal line to take advantage of that size. This is a little bit of a wrinkle now running him on a slant. Ball just thrown behind a little bit. That's one Bo Nix would love to have back. Here's your third and goal. Goes underneath to Bucky. And Bucky's met at the five-yard line. And then something extra at the end. Well, he's holding true to his promise. But he wasn't satisfied. That's what he said to Katie George. And they were up big. They're 35-0. He said, we're not satisfied. We want more. He said, I hope everybody that tuned in to watch this game keeps watching in the second half. Fourth and goal, a 42 zip, and he wants to add to it. Nix looking for an option, trailing back. Flag is down as that is incomplete. Holden was the intended target. Johnny Cornelius, a right tackle with the hold. Holding. Offense number 66. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is our turnover on downs. It'll be called around his ball, first and ten. Jesse, are you curious to see the post-game handshake between Dan Lanning and Coach uh, Prime? Yes, I am. I am too. Indeed. A lot of intensity coming into this one. And Dan Lanning was very complimentary and respectful to Coach Prime coming in. He says you have to be a fool not to recognize the results that Coach Prime has created on a team that did not have success before. So Colorado takes over on the turnover on downs. Hankerson able to give them some breathing room. We haven't seen that all day. We really haven't seen that too much this season. Is Colorado being able to just run the football between the tackles. And it's not like they've got to go off for 200 yards a game on the ground. But you've got to do things to slow down the opposing pass rush. Second and three. Ankerson goes ahead again, hard running on two straight runs as he gets the first down. Jackson with the tackle. You do get the feeling, though, Joe, that, that I think the Colorado players kind of got the message at halftime that these coaches are watching and they want to see the effort and they want to see how they compete. We've seen a couple of examples of that here in the second half from the Buffalo. Here's Shador. Hankerson picks up the rush. Shador's going to tuck and run and scoot out of bounds. Another flag is down. This looks like it could be holding. It's all the way back at the 11. Yeah, it was Devin Jackson coming in on the blitz, and that time Anthony Hankerson having problems in pass protection. We just saw Dylan Edwards struggle the last time out, so they bring in their best pass pro guy. And number nine, Hankerson, and, and he couldn't do it clean, which caused the penalty. The door, downfield strike, and that was batted away. The pass defended by Kyrie Jackson. Javon Antonio was the 6-4 intended target. I think you could make an argument that Kyrie Jackson's been the MVP of this game defensively for Oregon. He's been on an island one-on-one -on -one with a variety of receivers for Colorado, and he's been winning these one-on-one -on -one balls. Here he's going up against a 6-foot-4 receiver, but again, you see how he gets the head turned around and locates it? There's a little bit of hand fighting. The referees aren't going to call P.I. when they see the effort like that from the corner. There's an inside screen to Weaver. That had no chance at all. Amabai, Obo Amabai had the tackle, the big defensive tackle. They're, they're happy to get Amabai back on the field. Missed last year due to injury. Year before that, he was a first-team all-conference performer. He is athletic, and he's a guy that can collapse the pocket and make life very difficult for opposing quarterbacks. Now, Lanning wants more. This crowd wants more. They're still roaring on third downs. 
Shador on third and 15 gets the strike, and Weaver rewards him with the first down. It's a great job settling into his zone and nice anticipation on the throw by Sanders, getting it to his receiver early here. Hitch, get it out, and when you get it to him quickly, there's more separation between the receiver and the DBs. Anchorson, he's been bent, stiff arm bounced to the outside before he is ridden down by Jamal Hill. I tell you, you know, when you watch Oregon defensively, I, I always compare to Georgia's defense in 2021, the, the, arguably the best ever. I was coached by Dan Landing, and one thing that shows up for Oregon is they've got a lot of speed at linebacker. Dudes that can go sideline to sideline. Not a lot of running backs that run away from them. Flag was thrown right near midfield. This is legally based on the substitution. You know what the defense has been able to do statistically? 73 total yards for Colorado. Second five. Shador constantly floating back and is able to get the first down. And another flag as Antonio had the catch. We'll check on the flag. It's hard to play the position when you can't step into throws. That yes. time is right guard BB in his lap. Right tackle Washington struggling. Pass interference. Offense number 84. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's Cole Basha working over the middle of the field. He kind of ran a pick on Jamal Hill. The referee's called that. His interference. Final seconds here of the third quarter. And third quarter. Bo Nix has led the way with three touchdown passes and a touchdown run. 42 to zip. Oregon smelling a shot. Football presented these National Lampoon's Animal House became a cultural phenomenon. And the fictional band Otis Day and the Knights were rocking there. And they just played it here. And this place is still rocking. And this was the scene as the Oregon Duck players themselves were shouting to the scoreboard at 42 to zip. And that is how we start this fourth quarter with Dylan Edwards. Oh, it's a celebration, no doubt. It almost feels like they've won the Pac-12 championship, the way the players are on the field, jumping around, the way this, the crowd is responding here. You know, we got a stripe out today at Austin Stadium. What a crowd it's been. Sixth largest in Austin Stadium history. There have been a lot of big games. This one felt really big coming in, but boy, Oregon answered the bell. And something very unique when it comes to the perception and the attention this week. Third and 19 is Shador. He's going to run for it, and he's able to find that seam out to the right and get the first down because nationally, all the shine, yep. everything was on Colorado. Yep. From the 60 Minutes feature to the non-endemic media just lauding Coach Prime. But here in this tiny little bubble of Eugene, they said, I'm sorry, do you not realize who they're playing? Shador tripped up, sacked again. Jordan Birch was probably the closest man to him. That is the seventh sack by Oregon. Seven. And it's Casey Rogers who had the fake punt early in the game. He is just walking the center Van Wells right back into the pocket into Shador Sanders' lap. It's been that kind of day all day. It's really been that kind of season for Shador Sanders so far behind this offensive line. But Oregon starters still out on the field, and they are not letting up. Big Casey Rogers, the 300-pounder who had the fake punt run for 18 yards. Dylan Edwards kept his balance past midfield. But Joe, what you said a moment ago, you're right. Oregon knew a lot of people would be tuning into this because of the prime effect. They're reminding people, by the way, we won 10 games a year ago. We've got a Heisman Trophy contender at quarterback. False start. Offense number 65. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Third down. And they're a team that has to be taken seriously. They're very good. And they're a team that has their sights set on reaching the college football playoff. 
and they felt disrespected coming into this game because they felt they were getting none of the attention publicly. Colorado 11 penalties for 102 yards. They're up 42 to zip, and this crowd is roaring on third down as if it's the first third down of the game. Quarterback a little banged up in that game, but found a way to get it done in the end. An amazing slate of games today. After the timeout, it's a third down and eight for Colorado. Oregon crowd is still roaring. They want that shutout. Defensive line was stemming there. See if the officials have something to say. Call consecutive timeouts. They called consecutive timeouts. It's a new rule. You can't do that. This can't time. do it. One of the three big rule changes coming yeah. into the 2023 season was you cannot call timeouts on consecutive plays. During the same dead ball period, you can't call those timeouts back to back. Third down and eight. Shador with a man in his face that was deflected at the line of scrimmage as Harrison still made a play on it, but it was incomplete. It's Brandon Dorless who just swam two Colorado offensive linemen on the same play. You can imagine that. Here's a guy that's 290 pounds that is so athletic. He can play outside and swim the tackle, swim the center, swim the guard, get home. Brandon Dorless has a rush specialist he works with in Atlanta and oh. as a private D-line coach he works with in LA. Wow. Which makes me laugh because you always hear about QB gurus. Yeah. Work, well, people now can go get pass rush specialists. Whoever the guy that Brandon Dorless is hiring it's obviously working. Ryan lets it go over his head and takes a good pin up. For Colorado. You up for the Aflac trivia question? Yeah, let's okay, go. let's do this. Here's right. the Aflac trivia question. Obviously, the focus today has been all things prime. Amazing player back in the day. Drafted fifth overall in 1989 by the Falcons. Who was the number one draft pick that year when prime was number five overall? Who went first? So I'm thinking back to being a kid and having, you know, rookie cards. And that was a pretty good draft class. And I'm going to guess the guy has ties both to the Pac-12 and to the state of Texas. And maybe to our company. And maybe to our company. <laughs> so I may have one day been a teammate of Deion Sanders. Ty Thompson is in at quarterback. As Jordan James takes it ahead. The Aflac trivia answer. Who was that number one pick? Well, it's the guy that's going to be analyzing the Eagles and the Bucks on Monday Night Football at 7.15 right here on ABC. Troy Aikman. Mm, he's pretty good. Think of some of the other names, though, in that, in that draft. Fire them off. Remember, go. You. You know him. Well, hold on. Let me, let me take out my trusty 1989 draft guide. This is Ty Thompson. Ty Thompson himself. He was a big, highly touted recruit. Jordan James takes it ahead. Well, you were asking the 1989 draft. Well, the 1988 Heisman Trophy winner went third overall to Detroit. He was a pretty decent running back out of Oklahoma State. Barry Sanders. That's right. And then the late, great Derek Thomas. Wow. Was coming out of Alabama, went to the Chiefs. Yeah. And then a famous cover of Sports Illustrated with a guy that looked like he would make Hulk Hogan look small back in the late 80s. The Packers offensive tackle out of Michigan State. Tony Mandrich? Excellent by you. Excellent. That's bonus Aflac trivia points for you, my friend. Just think a lot of head coaches and GMs got it right that draft class outside of Mandrich. Kenyon Sadiq, the true freshman tight end there. Now here's another guy that I think you're going to see a lot more of if you're an Oregon fan. Kenyon Sadiq, very, very athletic. Easily their fastest tight end. And a guy that I think as this year goes on can work his way into the lineup more, stretching defenses vertically, and another toy for offensive coordinator Will Stein to get the ball to. They ran the jet motion. targeting. Or they're going to take a look at targeting here. But Sadiq, they've run him in jet motion, oh, giving yeah. the ball like it's Brock Bowers. Well, it's like that's, that's the new thing now in college football. You get really good athletes playing the tight end spot and handing it off to them. Jet sweeps, screens. 
things that uh, Troy Aikman was, was never even conceiving back in the day. He was the first pick of the draft. Well, they're looking at targeting here. So targeting again needs to be forcible contact to the head or neck area or forcible contact initiated with the crown of the helmet. Yeah, making contact with the crown of the helmet, no matter where it is, is a form of targeting. Let's bring in Matt Austin and hear what Matt has to say, our rules expert. Yeah, he does look like 31 comes in. He definitely lowers his head. I, it, it, it's it's like kind of a glancing blow with the with the top with the crown of the helmet. But here's the thing: this rule is to protect 31 as much as it is the the player getting hit, because you can have catastrophic injuries if you come in with your head like that. And number 31 is the backup safety for Colorado, Jaden Milner Jones. So that is what they are reviewing. As he came in with the hit on Kenyon Sadiq. Sit back. They're going to confirm this. The rule on the field being no targeting is the word we're getting. But you sit back and... After further review, the contact was legal. There is no targeting on the play. First down. As I was going to say, you sit back and you take a big picture look at Colorado. Because we all got so granular in the last couple weeks of being in the weeds with each and every thrilling moment and then all the drama late night last saturday night or past midnight and you, you got to pull back and think big picture right of where this program was of all the turnover i mean this is a team that had a roster overhaul of 69 new scholarship players if you said four games in you're going to be three and one you're oh. like wow amazing no doubt wow can you believe that this is Jaden lamar who is the fourth string running back. Remember, Noah Whittington went out injured in this game. We've seen a lot of Bucky Irving, a lot of Jordan James, and now Jaden Lamar getting playing time. Well, I think for Colorado, you know, obviously a talent standpoint, top to bottom on the roster, after that extreme overhaul, taking over a team that was averaging 15 points a game offensively and giving up 44 a game defensively, that was a tall ask. And they've got some of the pieces to win games, but when you play a team like Oregon... With the talent they have and the depth that they have, you know, the holes really start to show in your roster. False start. False start. Offense number 52. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And Jesse, you talk about this offensive line of Colorado we've been focused on. And Lincoln Riley and USC must be sitting back right now and saying, okay, we got it. Understand the assignment. Well, I mean, I mean you start 3-0, and but then six of your next nine games are against ranked opponents, including today. And now you got to go back to back and probably, you know, the, the most important two game stretch of their season. And you don't have your most dynamic player, Travis Hunter, on the field this week. They're certainly hoping they can get him back sooner than later. This is Ty Thompson, the backup quarterback. Ty Thompson, by the way, I mentioned was a five star freshman. He was the backup to Anthony Brown back in 2021 when Brown was the starter. He probably assumed, understanding his physical gifts and his recruitment, that he would be the eventual starter, and then Bo Nix comes in. But I give Ty Thompson credit. In a day and age of nonstop transferring of quarterbacks looking for playing time, he stuck it out. He stuck it out. I think he realizes his best opportunity is here in Oregon, and I've been really impressed with him. He's had some struggles early in his career, but through the first couple of games this season, looks very, very confident. He's playing fast. Third and eight, Thompson. Scrambling, tucking, getting to the corner, and going out. It'll be fourth down. I think real conversations happening in the locker room after this game, on the flight home. You saw practice this week and the intensity. I think that's going to ratchet up even more for Colorado. A little bit of that conversation. Talk about a connection with the other coach as well, Dan Lanning. On the other side is Jimmy Horn, who decides to return it from inside the five and then steps up to seven. But we'll tell you about a certain connection that's very special to Dan Lanning when we return. 42 to Zip, Oregon, as you're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Great teachers. Since its inception, the CFP Foundation has recognized over half a million educators. For more, follow CFP Extra Yard. And long before Dan Lanning climbed the college football coaching ranks, he was a PE teacher at Union Chapel Elementary in Kansas City with Jeannie Henning, who taught kindergarten. Henning is there in the stands this afternoon to support Coach Lanning. She said she always admired how spirited and passionate Lanning was teaching his students. And boy, have we seen that passion today. She's loved following his coaching.
coaching career. She's attended a game when Lanning was at Georgia, and now she's made her way out to Eugene's house. Isn't that so great? They invited her to be out here for this. Ball start. Offense number 78. The penalty's in force. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Aerial coverage today is brought to you by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. A unique scene as fans start to leave Austin Stadium. McCaskill is driven back. And Joe, to put it into perspective, for the kind of day it's been for Colorado, they almost have as many penalty yards as they have total yards on offense. 105 penalty yards, 109 total yards. 105 penalty yards, Colorado has been assessed. 109 total yards. You know, we're, we're watching all these people leave over the Willamette River, and still you look around this stadium, so many people, though, are still here. Second and 12 as Antonio takes it for a first down. That's what the big body can give you at 225 pounds. And you just saw Alton McCaskill at running back a few plays ago, too. The transfer from Houston. They, they need some more bodies, as you just mentioned, Joe, to step up and make plays. And they think that McCaskill at running back and Antonio at receiver can sort of correspond with Horn and, and Weaver to be more dynamic for Sean Lewis. Quickly out. To Tavarish Dawson. Dawson had a huge play on that dramatic 98 yard game time touchdown drive last week. Had an 18 yard catch for a critical first down. Shador on second down, trying to play to the wire and get something out of it. Deep shot, and that ball is incomplete. Looked like Jimmy Horn had it right in his pocket, but then unable to secure it as it popped out right at the end. Well, Jimmy Horn's in the middle of the field. He's splitting two defenders. It's the safety, Stevens, who's there trying to break it up, who's just able to get his hands in to make it a no catch. Great individual effort. Third and five. Oregon seeking the shutout. Crowd wanting that goose egg next to Colorado's name. So they're still roaring on third downs, even though the game's been out of control, got sideways early. Shador, he's going to launch it again. Well overthrown, and another flag comes in. Holding. Defense, Defense number eight. eight. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He plays... His A game week in, week out, man. Texas, that's the team to look out for in the Big 12. I'm looking forward to seeing how they look tonight against a team that often plays up for them. But we got a table where we can see that game. We got a, a uh, screen, hopefully, in with some, with some Willamette Valley, Oregon, Pinot Noir. Yeah, we do. That, that sounds excellent. I know. And then we got that's Michael Penix pairing. Jr. in Washington. Oh, I'm all in. Coming out after that. Speaking about a guy who likes to push the football down the field. You may have to switch models and vintage then to something. A, a Washington. To more, to a nice a, cab well, blend. Maybe perhaps a, a, a passing time, a bottle of passing time. Okay. Second and five. Shador. And he's just going to go ahead and get it past midfield. You know, and you obviously have to be happy if you're Tosh LePoy, Oregon's defensive coordinator, and Dan Landing, seeing the performance of your defense putting up the goose egg so far. But you look at their schedule down the road, there are a lot of really good quarterbacks on the slate they're going to face. Obviously saw a great one in Shador Sanders here today. But this isn't the end of it. McCaskill takes it ahead. Jesse mentioned the fact he was a superstar freshman at Houston toward the ACL. Now he's back. I mean, so look at this. I mean, you're going to be playing Caleb Williams, you know, down here. And you got to play Cam Ward up here. And then you got to play Cam Rising. And there's just a lot of guys. Michael Penix is on that list as well. This defense for Oregon that struggled at times a year ago, they're really going to have to be able to step up. And they're, you know their next major test well, so against the guy that very well might be the front runner for the Heisman Trophy right now, putting up video game numbers, and Michael Penix Jr. You think there'll be a few NFL scouts at that uh, game? Yeah, one or two decision makers. Dan Lanning, he set the tone. His words did that, and his team has delivered. Third and two, McCaskill. That'll be a first down. Boy, this place is roaring, and that little one is sleeping. 
How does that happen? They're scoring in the sleep, Jim. They're scoring. <laughs> I mean, just like it's a scoring lullaby. A rocking. Sanders on the inside throw as he goes to Dawson. Listen, you want to finish right through if you're Colorado. You want to show something. You want to get on that board. Prime knows there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do in just managing the program, retooling the roster, but week by week, you got to put a brick in the foundation. Seeing the same thing though from Oregon as well right now. Dan Lanning is still coaching hard on the sidelines for the Oregon Ducks. He's trying to maintain this shutout and really drive the point home. I'm talking to Katie at the end of the first half. You saw the intensity. We saw it in the locker room and his message to his team. He's not going to stop coaching until there's zeros on the clock. Will there be a zero next to Colorado's name? That is the question right now for Shador Sanders. Across the field to the end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Dawson. It's been very hard for Shador Sanders to just find a rhythm throwing at this time, working to his left. He's able to get his shoulder turned around, but his ball kind of sails on him. You don't see that happen very, very often. Really nice job there by Nico Reed. The Colorado transfer knocking that one away. That's right. Started 13 games at CU and led them in interceptions a year ago, now playing opposite. Fourth and four. Shador got to have it quickly to the outside and gets it with Weaver and Moore as he cuts back before being taken down. It'll be first and goal Colorado. Dan Lanning was running down the sideline trying to get a timeout call. He couldn't get it. And there's Weaver. This is what we talked about with their speed. You see here he's on the sideline. He's trying to get a call in. He's not going to get it. Timeout. No, it's too late. Weaver's already gotten the first. And I'm sure there are people who are saying, what is going on with the level of intensity being played when this game is 42 to nothing? It's because of what Dan Lanning said and what he wants and what he declared to his team opposite that superstar, Coach Prime. This has been played with intensity throughout, even though... It has been lopsided throughout. Shador Sanders looking and finding Harrison. So you can forget the shutout. Colorado shows a little something late. You would have had to go back to 2012 against Arizona. That was the last time Oregon had a shutout against a Pac-12 school, and they won't get it today. Well, Shadur Sanders actually faked the pitch the wrong way. Cavassier Smoke's going that way, and they're going to get Harrison sneak back across the other way. But you see, Shadour, he kind of fake pitches to the left where nobody is. He's forced to get rid of that thing early, and finally Colorado gets on the board. And that's something, you know, showing his coaching staff that they're willing to keep fighting and keep competing until the very end. And that is blocked. The extra point attempt by Alejandro Mata is blocked. Joey Harrington had the billboard treatment. Of course, Marcus had it all. And then the billboard treatment has come for Bo Nix recently. And today, Bo Dacious has gone for three touchdowns passing. Another one rushing. And he's been out of the game with this blowout of a score. Fine playing well. I think as soon as, as Nagati said 98 degrees, Book started sweating. Exactly. Like, yeah. like, like hearing that. Dowdell in at running back as he gets the carry and spins ahead for the 29. Tomorrow on NFL Sunday Countdown, a look at the Jets' frustrations. They try to end their losing streak to the Patriots. And Dijon Robinson. Now he got his start by breaking items around his grandmother's house. That's 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. I can imagine the Palmer house was pretty rough back in the day with the three of you. A lot of men, you know, dad played pro football. There was me, my younger, bigger brothers, Billy and Christian. Um, you know, it was uh, controlled chaos. It was like herding cats, Joe. It was. There's Will Stein, who replaced Kenny Dillingham, who took the ASU job. He's a new play caller for Oregon, and his offense has been sensational today. Katie? Dante Dowdell 
Tessa, I've known Will Stein since I was five years old. He and my brother are best friends. They were in each other's weddings. He and I overlapped as student athletes at the University of Louisville where he played. Come in and be able to stick to Oregon's offensive identity, but also bring his own wrinkles. William's clearly been able to do that here today. I love that photo of all the kids growing up back in Louisville. I like the photo of Katie grabbing the za. Oh, yeah. Went right for the oh, pizza, right in front of the camera. Let's, let's just keep the focus on what's important. Guys, feel Always. free to put that back up anytime with the Where's Waldo shirt out of Katie George. And, you know, and then in the back corner, you see brother Timmy, who is like downing multiple pieces at the same time as if he's never had a meal in his life. <laughs> The there's Katie right up in front. The heaters in the George family. And there's the, right there, say? Will Stein. Everybody's hoarding their pizza, expecting <laughs> Katie to come around and steal slices. That's enough out of you two. <laughs> up there. Will Stein's double fisting. He's got the pizza. He's got the Pepsi. He's got the, the, the soft drink. Some of that, some of that za up here. Where's this thing headed for Colorado, Jesse? Well, listen, I, I do think that Coach Prime is the real deal, but there are obviously a lot of holes uh, on the field right now from a roster standpoint. I think a lot of that demonstrated itself today. A lot of things to fix in pass protection and tackling defensively on special teams, but penalties too, Joe. Oh, come on. With 12 penalties. penalties with over 100 yards. I mean, Coach Prime will probably tell you after the game we could not have played any worse. And you wonder just how much they had emotionally left in the tank after being in the spotlight the first three weeks of the season and then that physical overtime win against Colorado State. They've got to go back to the drawing board and they've got to go back quickly. Well, Ty Thompson is in now at quarterback as Sadiq, the freshman tight end, gets some luck. Well, I love everything that Prime is doing in terms of the messaging, in terms of the overused phrase culture change. Um, and the one thing, and we had the chance to visit with them extensively this week, fly out to Boulder and spend a whole day with the program. The one word you will hear over and phrase over and over from the coaches to the players is, we are old school coaches, yeah. old school coaches. Yeah. And he referenced Mickey Andrews, yeah. the yeah. defensive coordinator at Florida State, his defensive coordinator. Well, who I played against. And really, there are expectations and there are standards that Coach Prime is setting in practice. And if you don't live up to that, there are consequences. If you don't practice hard, if you don't give great effort, if you don't have an intensity, you don't love football, you're not going to play or you're not going to be part of this program. That's how you change the culture, Joe. And I think there's a lot of people out there that, that see all this and they just think it's, it's always a party in Boulder with the football team all the time and they're not taking it seriously. That could not be further from the truth. But there are old school principles and values that Coach Prime is instilling in this program and that's how you get things turned around. And listen, the truth is, and the reality is, it takes time. Coach is very hard. Coach is very tough. As he will remind everybody, first and foremost, he considers himself a disciplinarian. He had that opening introductory meeting with the program. And players got the message. Not everybody's going to be around. This isn't for everybody. But I'll tell you, the effect of Coach Prime, the past three weeks and where this whole thing has gone, it really transcended football, the coverage of them. Everybody just in awe. And it's got a, there's a lot that goes into the boil pot of why. But you're talking about one of the greatest American athletes of all time who in a second act of life is Transcends it. everything, right? It's not just because of his accomplishments on the field when he played. It's his personality. It's the magnitude that everybody just wants to be a part of. And things will just close out here on a day when right from the start, Jesse, he said to us the other day, Prime said, we have to start fast. You couldn't have a worse start. Meanwhile, it was the guys across the field who started so fast. Who had a chip on their shoulder, felt like a lot of people were watching this game to see what would happen with Colorado, forgetting just how good of a team Oregon is. Dan Lanning delivered that message to his team all week, pregame, kept his foot on the gas. That is an impressive win for the Oregon Ducks. Now remember, Dan Lanning said, we're not done, we want more. He went for it on fourth down, put more points on the board. Let's see this handshake. And that's exactly what you expect from those two great competitors. They understand what it's about. You go all out. And that's what Lanning and Prime did. But Lanning had that pregame speech where he said, this is rooted in substance. 
They're fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. And then told Katie George when they were up 35 to nothing, we're not done. We're not satisfied. Let's hear what he says now. Coach Lanning, pregame, you told your team we're not playing for clicks. We're playing for wins. What kind of message do you feel like your team sent with this win? Yeah, they, they, they're ready to get better. They're hungry to get better. We're certainly not satisfied, right? This is one game. Now we're on to the next one. we got to focus on the next one. There's a lot that we can improve from that game. Uh, fun, energetic on the field. But our guys have a standard to uphold. How would you describe the defense's performance this afternoon? They did a good job. They did a good job. You can't uh, overshadow that. Right? We're going to face some elite teams. We need to play great quarterbacks in this conference right now. Uh, so it was certainly some to get better on. Uh, but they did a good job today. They upheld the standard. Congratulations on a great win. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Good back. Jesse, Bo Nix completed 85% of his passes. He had four total touchdowns. He had a big stage with a lot of Heisman voters watching, and he took advantage, Joe. Phenomenal day for Bo Nix. 522 yards for Oregon to 194 for Colorado. 42-6 to six is your final. We got Texas Baylor coming up at 7.30 here on ABC. For Katie and Jesse, I'm Joe Tessitore telling you to enjoy the rest of your night.